This is a production of Cornell University. My name is Jacob Johnston. I'm with the Project Yard Map at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, a citizen science program aimed at creating habitat in your yard. I'll show you the yard map uh, application online and the website and how we use that. Yard maps essentially allows scientists to better understand how landscape use and gardening choices affect birds and wildlife populations in a residential or urban settings. Um, in terms of coexistence, we're realizing also that a greater diversity of birds and a greater diversity of plants and uh, wildlife around a neighborhood or around a group of people improves their well-being. And this is true in almost any demographic and almost any society. And so what YardMap seeks to do is um, collaborate with groups of people to join people together and to create a community of yard mappers, a community of people making connections or connecting points. Um, connectivity is a very big concept in ecology that connects um, large expanses of wild areas through small expanses of wild areas like yards. One yard that's yard mapped and is being managed for wildlife is great. Two yards is even better because that provides stepping stones from, say, a national forest to, you know, Lake Saranac or something. Then you have you have these stepping stones of habitat, and when you have stepping stones connected, you have corridors. So you have corridors and stepping stones, and all of this, you know, when a community works together to provide all the necessi necessary or essential parts of a habitat across the landscape, that's when we can all make a really big difference. So what I want to do is show you some of yard map. And some of the uh, some of the best practices that we suggest and some of the tools that we have for um, for planning it yourself. And this is our website. This is our new page, our new home page. And it sort of demonstrates what I was just referring to the actions of you and your community can create you know a larger more uh, efficient and useful habitat so a, anatomy of a yard map a yard map takes a google image of your house you outline it and then you fill in the habitats and then you place objects like trees and bushes and bird feeders on that habitat and it creates a yard map like this. I'll show you that in a second. Here's our active participants adding uh, habitats or objects to their yards. And then when you do, when you add, say, uh, you know, a native flower bed or native flower garden to your yard, you uh, you document that and, you, and, it, and it tells the scientists here at yard map. So let's see. Up here on this top bar, we have a lot of resources. The Explore resource will show you, will take you, um, if you put in your zip code here, this will show you your uh, plant hardiness zone and your ecoregion and give you the list of um, bird reports, local experts, states native plants. This is a really nice uh, link here that gives you uh, suggestions of available plants that you can buy. And then here's places where you can buy them. And here's places where you can get together with community, um, commu uh, community events that are around you. And that's all based on your zip code and plant hardiness zone. So that's one of the things that uh, YardMap allows or um, you know, provides a resource for. And then we have the top learn, we have the learn articles, which are uh, constantly updated articles referring to um, best practices, basically. Um, native lawns, replacing uh, 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 non-native plants with native plants, um, they're escaping, you know what I mean? Anything you can think of, rain barrels, cats. And so there's um, just a lot to learn from that section there but what our what we the citizen science part of it here is the mapping 
and here's our this is an example here of a map that's been created. And we can take a look at some other maps that have been re recently created. There, right now there is a project going on up in Canada where they um, are encouraging elementary schools to map their schools. So here's a map where each of these sections has been outlined with a tool. And then each of these trees were placed. And I'll just take a quick second and show you a little bit of mapping. So first you find oops. first you would find your house. Say this is my house here. You use a site outline tool. You pick whether you're using a, a, a home or it's a school or a community garden. You can map farms, parks, preserves. And if you have something else that's unique, like we have a couple of yard mappers that map their balcony. You know, they live in a giant apartment building, but they have a wonderful uh, uh, garden on their balcony. And so they use this other to just map the balcony. So I'm going to pick a, ho a home and I'm going to assume that I know the boundaries of this house, this property, and so that's what it takes there. It saves it. And then you use a habitat tool, to outline the lawn. I'm going to be really rough about this, but you can I'll show you some intricate examples that are really well done. And there's some forest here. All of the dots are movable. You can either expand the range or you can move the whole piece around like this. And there's also buildings. And so this gives this gives us area and type of habitat, but it doesn't give us everything. But you want to, what happens next, once these things are mapped, you go into the you go into the characteristics page and you can put in information. I'm going to call my house my home. The characteristics, does it have a garage? Or is it a home? This is a home. So then, it, like, we want to know about the roof. Does it have a green roof or does it have a white roof? Because white roofs help with uh, an albedo effect with uh, warming of uh, the climate around you and things like that. And you can put in some comments and you can upload photos. And that's for almost every object. Every object has and every habitat is going to have um, these characteristics that you can include information for like the lawn do you use an electric lawnmower or a gas powered lawnmower or push reel lawnmower that sort of thing everything is going to have a different collection of characteristics once you get the entire area filled i'm not going to fill it right now but once this area is filled that's when you go back through you find you go to the object tool and then you can start adding trees and say this tree not sure what happened there, pardon me. Pardon me, just give me one second here. Doesn't seem to want to save for me. Oh, there's the tree. Okay. So when you open the tree, you can type in the type of what you want to call it. Say it's, you know, it's my, uh, I have a big swing in the tree or something. And then this is an interesting part here. You can 
put in this and say it's a red maple. So I'm going to put an acer. And as I start to type, species lists will come up. This is where the citizen science data comes in really handy. Because then we have species and abundance on the in each of these properties. So that's one of the one of the things that you can do with yard map. And then also we are starting to really integrate the yard map with all of the other citizen scientists uh, programs. So if I open this site again, I can, make sure I keep getting that error message. I can list all the birds that I have seen on this site. And this uses the eBird, this uses the eBird citizen science program. And so what you do here is you add data to the eBird program through the yard map program. And then that ties them together. And eventually what we'd like to be able to do is uh, connect nest watch and feeder watch with these so that when you put a bird feeder, let's see, let me find a bird feeder. There's a lot of objects down here on the bottom. If you look, there's planters, cactuses, everything from um, wildflowers to bat houses and bee nests. Here's a bird house. I'll put a bird house in the lawn here. So then it won't be long before you can um, connect your nest watch data with the bird houses that you put on your land or on your yard map. So like if you notice here, yard map is in beta. We are constantly growing and expanding, but right now it is, is very usable and um, very, very fun to use. <laughs> We have a lot of people that enjoy it, and we're really glad that um, folks like you are interested in learning about it so that you can uh, take it to your communities and uh, put it to use and get, get feedback for us here at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and um, provide um, much better habitat, more uh, efficient, more efficient habitat for I'm sorry, I seem to be losing this. Okay, well, I, if anybody would like to see anything else, let me know. This is uh, just a quick demonstration of this, but it, it, does, it definitely takes a little bit of a learning curve to learn to use. First, you, you know, here's a, and some exploring to use the uh, website here, but. Once you get the hang of it, it's fast and a lot of fun. So uh, we do have a lot of um, uh, uh, extension members um, using this with their communities um, to create groups and things like that. And so what we've been focusing on recently is, let me see if I can give you all a sneak peek. This is behind the scenes. This is not a live site here, but what we are working on now is this groups function. And this is what we'd like uh, people that work with the communities, people that work uh, with uh, other like community gardeners or planners to uh, collaborate together and to work together in a group. Um, so this is the new function that we're starting here. And these groups, um, you can find a group to join, you can start your own group, and you can um, create, let's see, you can, uh, let me see if I can pull one up here. Yeah, and then you can compare your group to other groups, and you can compare yourselves within a group. So if you're in a group that's, say, native lawn, you know, native lawn group, and you're all trying to get the least amount of uh, lawn on your yard and the most amount of native plants or something, then you know you can you can compare each other's efforts through this group function here and that will probably be live in a few weeks so that's something to look forward to there through uh, the the learn and the explore tabs 
but eventually after the group functionality that we're working on now, the next part, the next tool that we're going to add to the yard map uh, network is called a planning tool. And that will be a second map that you sort of lay over the map that you have so that you first will assess what you have and then after that you can plan what you want and yard map will make the connections for you so if you want you know to put in a native garden the yard map may pop up and say here's native plants for your area that will work to attract the birds that you listed you want to attract you know what i mean something like that right now it's sort of uh using the resources to explore on your own, but very soon it will be one that is a, a planning tool that gives you the resources and suggestions. What you would do is go to the Explore tab and put in um, your zip code here. And one of the best resources that I've found, that we've found for plant suggestions is this. Uh, your state's native plants. It takes you to the um, Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. And it will give you a suggestion of, of uh, native plants. Uh, and then you can filter that suggestion too if you want trees or if you want bushes or if you want them to flower in June or if you want them to be, you know, dry, dry site type flowers. You know what I mean? There's a, a number of ways you can filter. Um, the selection to get kind of what you have in your yard if you have a dry site that gets lots of sun with acidic soils and you want something that gets about four feet high, you can enter all that into that. Uh, so there's 16,000, uh, almost 17,000 sites across the country. Um, we do have some sites in Mexico, lots of sites in Canada. We've got a couple in like Costa Rica, a couple in Europe. We're really trying to work together with the uh, the Google Earth or the Google Maps to make that more accurate. Right now, the, the the software isn't as accurate as it needs to be. You know, lining up a Google Earth picture with our with our, our mapping tools doesn't quite work very well. So people have some difficulties outside of the country. Uh, Canada and Mexico seem to be fine, but any further outside of that, and it's, um, it has to do with projections, with map projections and things like that that we're working on. Um, but the engagement is always going up. This number was 200,000 acres mapped just a few weeks ago. So we've almost had 40,000 acres mapped in a couple of weeks. Um, so people are always um, coming back to it. There's no commitment to come back to your map, although we do try to encourage people to always be adding and changing and updating um, what, what they've done to their yards. You know, if any changes you make to your yard, we want to know about it, you know, and then know any, any differences that uh, may have come about from that. So there's no, like I say, there's no commitment, but as often as you want or as few as you want, we try to keep people coming back at least once a year with any changes that have made. If the tree fell over or, you know, they changed their gardening techniques or something like that. Yardmap.org. This has been a production of Cornell University. On the web at cornell.edu.